Lions TV, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, whenever you're watching this and wherever you may be watching this. This is going to be a Monday roundup show. There's been a lot going on in and around the club over the last week or so, and I thought, why not let it all build up and cover it in one show on a Monday? Hopefully, we'll brighten up your day a little bit if you're not having the best of Mondays. I used to hate Mondays when I was a builder, by the way, and I just I used to dread them, still dread thinking about them days. So, yeah, hopefully this will get you through a shit day at work, if you're at work, or you're just sweating your tits off out in this weather. There's a lot to talk about. Let's start with the players. They have returned, obviously, to pre-season training at Calmont Road on Thursday. I don't think there's any ball work going on. I think it looked like sheer running. So, uh, fair play to them for getting back into it so quickly after a very short layoff. Only one addition through the door were one addition from last season. Obviously, Ryan Woods had already returned to the club on a season long loan from Stoke. And one extra addition through the door at the minute from last year is, of course, 19-year-old striker Troy Parrott from Tottenham Hotspur, who has joined on a season-long loan. Troy Parrott wears number 25 this season. I don't know who was 25 last season or if there was one. If you know your squad numbers, then, then you're better than I am. Let me know in the comments. And also, one other change to squad numbers is Billy Mitchell. Billy Mitchell now goes from 42 to 24. So he's working his way up that pecking order. And of course, other big news from within the squad, not a change in squad number or personnel, but a change of direction in a way for Sean Williams. Sean Williams has become the first team coach at Millwall. So let me explain that first and foremost, because when I put it out on social media, people were saying, uh, does that mean Gary Rowe is not the manager anymore? Let's, let's go over the whole situation of what happened. So Gary Rowett comes to the club. He brought with him Callum Davison. Callum Davison has been his assistant and, he, and his right-hand man since his Stoke and his Derby days. Uh, he, he really had a lot of trust in Davison. And uh, there was a good combat, a good duo. He's always been part of Gary Rowett's backroom staff. St. So Johnston came in and, and asked Callum Davison to be the manager. They approached me all earlier on last season. Uh, Callum Davison rejected that. Then they come back just after lockdown. And, you know, being a Scot, having aspirations of wanting to be a manager himself... He accepted the job and he left the club. And some people did point to that saying, oh, you know, this is why we haven't been as good since lockdown because Callum Davison has left the club. And, and that's what we do need to look at sometimes. It's not just the players you see on the pitch. It can be, you know, start to finish, one to 200 at the club, right across the board. Every, every squad member, every physio, every analyst, every dinner lady even. You know, it all has an effect on what you see on the pitch. And I know for a fact that Callum Davison was very well thought of of Rowett, obviously, but he's also, you know, he's very well liked by the players. So some people pointed to us not doing so well post-lockdown to Callum Davison leaving the club, you know. And I don't think that was the case, but when it was such bad timing with it, people could always use that, you know, as ammo to, to point towards if things aren't going so well. So he leaves the club. Adam Barrett steps up to acting assistant manager for the rest of the season. Now, if you remember Adam Barrett, Adam Barrett was, and has always been for a long time, part of the uh, the coaching staff at Millwall. A high-level coach, very well thought of again uh, by Gary Rowett's predecessor, Neil Harris. You may remember that Barrett actually took over for a few games after Harris left. I think he did about three games in charge before Gary Rowett got the job. He was definitely in charge for the 3-2 uh, the defeat when we was 2-0 up with five minutes to go away at Brentford. I remember that, and I think a home game where we drew 1-1. I'm not sure if he won a game in charge, but by the by, he's a very good coach, and he acted up, stepped up to the fold after Callum Davison left. So then the season ends, and we're saying, you know, who's Gary Rowett going to get in his assistant? What's going to happen? And this move for me, I don't know why it, why it did. I'm trying to, I was thinking not even to say this in this video, because when I heard the news that Sean Williams had stepped up to... Um, to play a coach, first team coach. So he's taken Adam Barrett's old role. And Adam Barrett is now the permanent assistant manager to Gary Rowett. It's not ideal, but it is what it is. And I think it's you know it's going to be a very good move for the club. And what I was saying was, it absolutely blew my mind for some reason. <laughs> I don't know why, but it absolutely blew my mind when Sean Williams got that job. I don't know why, because, listen, he's a great player. I'm a fucking massive fan, massive fan of Sean Williams. Um, I actually sometimes get, get grief for giving him too much praise. But I think... He's an, he's an excellent technician. Uh, some recent Lions lounges we've had with Byron Webster and, and Aidan O'Brien have both said, you know, what a player. Uh, but I think Byron Webster said the most technically gifted player he's ever played with. By his time on the ball, does a lot of work, you know, a lot of running as well. And and he may look, you know, a little bit times, a little bit lackadaisical on the ball, but he's not. It's just, that's how good he is at buying himself time. But listen, less of his playing attributes. Let's talk about him being a coach. I don't know why it's blown my mind so much. 
but he's, he is going to be Millwall's new first team coach and I think it's an absolutely brilliant move. I think that the players coming through can learn a lot of Sean Williams. Billy Mitchell uh, is now established in the first team, but he could learn a lot of Sean Williams. Gary Rowett has said that Sean Williams, um, his playing time isn't going to be reduced this season. I don't know whether he's just saying that and, you know, he, he said he can slowly grow into the role, but I'm not sure if he actually means that or or he's going to be, you know, he's going to play a lot less and he's going to coach a lot more. Whichever way it goes, it's, it's not a bad thing. It's going to be a gradual integration into it, I think, will be a good move. Um, you know, let Williams keep playing for now because I still think he's got a lot to offer the first team and I do like him, you know, distributing the ball and holding up the play and protecting that back four. I think he's a great player. I think he's got better as he's got older. From a coaching point of view, I think it's a brilliant move for the club. Sean Williams has been at the club for a long, long time now, six years. He joined from MK Dons in 2014, and so far he's played well over 200 games for the club. And as I said, I just think he gets better as he gets older. So I think the fact that Davidson's left, uh, and then Rowett likes obviously what he's seen. He ain't been around Sean Williams too long, and Adam Barrett too long, but to make that decision to bring those two in, you know, Williams stepping up to a coach and Barrett as permanent assistant manager. It keeps it all in-house. It keeps it all compact. It keeps people around the club that know the club well and have been part of the DNA of the club for a long, long time. So for me, Sean Williams, absolutely all over it. Congratulations to the wand, although it did surprise me. I don't know why it surprised me so much, but fuck it, it did. So next up, a bombshell, if you will, from Jason Malumbi. Jason Malumbi, of course, was on loan at Mill last season, returned to his parent club, Brighton, and you know, before that was that, before that was done, we weren't going to sign him permanently. I don't think we could afford to sign him permanently. And obviously, already bringing Ryan Woods back in, um, that definitely is awful. And we all thought, really, that, that was not going to be a way back into the club for Malumbi, should he want it. But Jason Malumbi came out in the Irish press this week and said the following I won't be spending the season playing nonsense matches like the under 23s. If the gaffer can't guarantee me involvement, I'll be straight back on loan. I'm sure Millwall will be an option. The manager, Gary Rowett, put a lot of trust in me last season. And I think that Troy Parrott will enjoy working under him. Bosh, there you go. Wear that from Jason Malumbi. I like that from Malumbi. It shows a lot of confidence in his own ability. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, it shows that he's determined to progress in football. And he's not going to waste his time, as he puts it, playing in the under-23s. But... Um, do we want him back? Well, I put it on social media and people were absolutely all over it. But now I'm going to give you my first unpopular opinion of the day. I don't want Jason Malumbi back at the club. I think Jason Malumbi is brilliant. If we could sign Jason Malumbi permanently for money and he becomes a Millwall player, then I'd have him back without an absolute doubt. But I don't believe in developing an, an, another club's talent, another club's youth. Uh, well, not youth. He's a little bit older than youth, but... Put it this way, we've got Billy Mitchell now, who is, make no mistake, an established first team squad member. And Gary Rowett has said that he is going to get a lot more game time this year. He's going to step into the Malumbi role. And I strongly believe that if given 20 games, he will progress further than Jason Malumbi. He's a better player technically than Malumbi. Uh, Malumbi's more aggressive, maybe. Um, they're different types of players. Billy's a lot more technical. Jason Malumbi, again, Ryan Woods and, and Sean Williams, similar types of player. Jason Malumbi, similar to those, but you know, slightly more of a ball winner than those two. Um, and for me, we don't need him. Not with Williams and Woods. And then you've got Mitchell there as well. And then obviously the further forward thinking two as well there are, are uh, Ryan Leonard and Ben Thompson. And the gaffer seems to prefer Leonard, which worries me, but that's another issue altogether. Um, so for me, if it's a loan... I don't want Jason Malumbi back at the club. I'll be very interested to see how well, well, I know how well he's going to do. Billy Mitchell this season, if he gets given the opportunity of a run of 10, 15 games, he will progress further than Jason Malumbi. I promise you that. You may think I'm crackers. Maybe I'm crackers. But I know my football and I know what a great player Billy Mitchell is. And he will progress further this season if given the same amount of game time that Jason Malumbi was last season. So for me, Jason Malumbi, if we can sign him permanently, I'd definitely consider it. But absolutely not as a loan. Not for me. So, other transfer rumours surrounding the club. I've heard nothing concrete, nothing concrete. Uh, the only thing I found out as concrete was Troy Parrott, and I, and I put it out there. So, I do not know anything else transfer-wise. You can put Max Lowe from Derby County and Walsall striker Josh Gordon in that bracket. As far as I know, so far, absolutely no other transfer news to talk about. However, Gary Rowett's come out in News of Den in an article with Jake Sanders and said... That he is actively trying to find another attacking player to come in. I believe, I don't know, I believe that player 
to be Mason Bennett. I can't see he's any other player than Mason Bennett. Yes, we had the option to buy Mason Bennett following his uh, loan spell at Millwall. Um, we had a we had a we had a time period from Derby to sign him for half a million pound, and we let that expire. Now I don't think that means we don't want him. I think that means we're trying to get a deal. JB does love a Del Boy style deal, and he wants a little bit of money off. Mason Bennett has obviously had his personal problems, which we'll leave in the past. But due to those problems in the past, I think that makes him um, not greatly desired by a lot of other clubs. There was apparently interest from in Sheffield Wednesday, but his loan spell with us was a little bit stop-start, and people are worried about he, he may be injury-prone. But let me tell you this, I'd buy him all day long. I'd have bought him for half a million if I can. I think he's another exciting, aggressive, direct player that we definitely, definitely need at the club. He, again, he, along with Ryan Woods, he's a level above the sort of players we was going under off, off, under Neil Harris. No disrespect to Harris. But Rowett goes after these better bracket of players, and I think if we can bring Mason Bennett into the club, his, injury, his injuries... You know, yes, he did have slight injuries at points, but don't forget, he comes to the club after the incident he did have and he wasn't playing. Then Gary Rowett sort of rushed him in um, and he wasn't quite fit and he got a little, I think he got a little tweak at that point. But then our post lockdown, don't forget, we had the lockdown incident and then after that, he couldn't play in the first game back because he was against Derby. And then after that, again, I think, you know, we tried to rush him back, rush him back. I think he's been playing a little bit injured. And again, that just shows the belief that Gary Rowett has got in him. But I think if given. A decent, well, not a full preseason because it's a shortened preseason. I think if get, in the, get him in the squad early, get him down the den early, get back at Calmont Road, give him a decent preseason, and I think that will quash any slight injuries he's had. He's only little tweaks here and there, you know, and that can happen with powerful players that are quick as well. So I think a full preseason under his belt at the den, and I think them, um, them injury worries will be eliminated. And I think he'll be a very, very strong player for me all next season. So I don't think that one's dead in the wall by any chance. I do think we're going to sign Mason Bennett, I've got to be honest. And if it gets done, I'll be over the moon. And you'll be the first to hear about it on Lions TV. So let's talk about the club's pre-season tour. Obviously, due to COVID-19, there will be no tour abroad this year. Less said about last year's tour, the better. So let's move fastly on to where the players are going. They're off up to Scotland tomorrow, um, which will be Tuesday. They've got a short training camp up there and they were supposed to be playing a friendly against Hearts. Um, that friendly is now off, postponed, called off, no thank you, not playing it, because Hearts have been advised by the Scottish FA not to return to training until August the 24th. But I thought, I just read that this morning, by the way, on, on um, London News Online, but I'm sure that the Scottish League's already started, so I'm baffled with that one. But that's by the by, we are not playing against Hearts. Gary Rowe has come out and said he's not too fussed, because on our return we have friendlies lined up. We know one of them friendlies is against Crystal Palace. I believe another one of those friendlies is against Crawley. Um, so, yeah, you know, Gary Rowe, it's not too fast. The players are going up for Scotland for a few days. It's different. It's going to be different to what we're used to. But again, all, all 92 league clubs across the board, across the country, across the world, it's going to be very different. And hopefully we adapt to this pre-season a little bit better than we adapted to life after lockdown. So, yeah, they've gone up to Scotland. They will play an in-house game instead of playing against Hearts. And finally, on this Monday Roundup show... Just a quick one. The fixtures are out for the EFL 2020-21 season. This Friday, I believe it will be 9am. That's when the fixtures get released. I might do a video for that. I always enjoy that. and you know, I'm sure we all do. We enjoy the fixtures coming out and finding that we're going this day there, we're going that day there. Oh, that'll be a good away day in the summer, around Christmas, whatever. However, don't forget, how could you forget, COVID-19. We are not going to be going to any away games till at least at least October, I probably think it will be uh, 2021, if I'm honest. So what we want to hope for, if you do go to a lot of away games like I do, you want to hope for we get, you know, Middlesbrough away, Sheffield Wednesday away, Preston away. We want all them early when we can't go to away games because when we, you know, we've got a lot of good away games coming up this year. So hopefully we want to go after the COVID is hopefully over. There's no guarantee it will be over. We need it to be over, so hopefully we can go to games later on in the season, away at Watford, away at Bournemouth, away at Wickham, to name a few. You know, we've got some very, very good Norwich again this year. We've got some exciting away days coming up, so when the fixtures come out, the first thing you need to look for is not who we're playing first and who we're playing last, which we always seem to do, and probably who we're playing around your birthday. I do that as well. You want to hope that we've got, unless you want to go to Middlesbrough, I've been there three years on the trot, believe me, you don't want to go to Middlesbrough. You want to check who we've got, Early away, and we've got late away. So you want all the northern ones that we can't go to anyway, early. And then, you know, the localish ones that we can go to later on. Maybe a lovely weekend to celebrate taking the title away at Bournemouth. 
towards the end of the season. We've been there before. So that is your lot for this Monday weekly roundup show. Uh, I'm trying to get lockdown guests. I am out of lockdown guests at the minute. I am chasing Steve Morrison like you wouldn't believe. And it's close. It's close. But he's on an R in. Hopefully, him seeing Byron Webster and Aidan O'Brien come on the show could get that one over the line. I'm also chasing Casey Keller. I'm trying to get in touch with Jimmy Abdu. The list is endless. I'm going big now. I'm not fucking around. Go hard or go home. So hopefully, there'll be some lockdown guests later this week. If not, then hopefully some transfers in. If not... I'll do a live stream. I'll do those um, best 11 live streams. We'll find something to do, but I'm back in the game now. A little bit of time off, and rightly so, and I'm now fresh and hungry for this new season and to get content out for you. So I hope you've enjoyed this Monday roundup show. 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 And I'll see you soon. Please subscribe to Lions TV. Come on, you Lions.